All right, guys. So here's another little project for us today. It's a uh, more specifically uh, for arc gouging in itself. The customer wants to remove this style of a, attachment to the mini excavator, and so he wants to make a different set of ears to fit his machine, which is fine, right? But he wants to keep this intact. And so this is where arc gouging comes in perfect uh, for this situation. So as we see here, it's just a one on simple hot pass, uh, one big hot weld on there all the way around. So in a very similar sense, be one pass of uh, arc gouging to remove it. And you can cut it off good enough to where you can reuse this and then add on to this as necessary uh, for the different attachment. This is mo gonna be mostly a video only for arc gouging and hopefully I can videotape it good enough for you to get a good understanding as to how it works. I'll do a little bit more explaining about it as I get set up for it. But it's a pretty straightforward job. Not too difficult at all. Uh, just this is not a welding video. It's an anti-welding. <laughs> anti-welding video. <laughs> uh, removing, removing these two pieces. And so that application works really well in the same sense when there's a crack in heavy thick material. You gouge into the material thickness that way you can fill it up with weld and that way it's 100% welded. But here, in this sense, we're removing. So, hang tight. Let me get all set up and we'll get started. Here we go. Alright, so for those of you that are not familiar with arc gouging, this is the holder that you will need. It's a specific holder for this. Uh, arc gouging torch handle, I don't know what they call it. But um, this one here, it's a Profax unit. It is a 3000-1. The 3000 is the size of, of uh, its capacity. They sell bigger ones. Most people will get the 4000, which is a slightly bigger head in this area here. But I like this one for me. It fits in tighter spots a little bit better. So that's what I go with. And uh, dash one, I believe, indicates swivel. So that's nice. So the basic principle of it is you have to hook it up to an external power source, which is this here. I just clamp it on. I mean, some people use, you know, quick connections. That works fine. And use a piece of rubber hose and use compressed air rubber hose to your compressed air uh, don't use anything else unless you have compressed air in a tank so usually you use a air compressor standalone air compressor I've used as small as a as a 13 CFM unit of 90 pounds that was a small gas engine drive that I had worked all right you had to wait on it every once in a while but it works uh, but now I have the Miller Trailblazer air pack it spits out a lot of air so I don't have any issues there Anyway, so the way this works is these are carbon rods, copper coated carbon rods, and they go in this specific holder here. You can tell there it's got a little V groove and you grab, grab it through there. And as you can tell here, it's got these air jets that push the flow of air along the length of the rod. And so in a sense here, let me move this over. As you strike an arc, let me see, can you guys see? Okay, hope you can see, hope it's not too dark. But as you strike an arc, the air will be blowing from the underside right here. It'll melt the molten puddle because you're creating the arc with the welding machine and the air will blow the puddle away. And so it basically erasing, almost like a hot knife through butter. Works really well, takes some getting used to, uh, very similar to stick welding, the rod does. Uh, get consumed and because it's a high amperage setup it goes fast so sometimes you have to feed the rod really quickly and that takes some getting used to getting the timing right sometimes what ends up happening is people will have too high of amperage and as they're arc gouging they'll have a lot of sputtering it's just very sputtery that's either too high of amperage or too slow at travel speed as far as weaving or straight lines uh, that type of thing so I like to back down the, the amperage first 
and that way you get a nice steady arc almost like welding you have a steady arc similar sense you have a steady arc with arc gouging um, you don't want it sputtering too much sputtering i would imagine make, makes your machine work really hard it's just constant on off on off on off uh, arcing so that may not be good for it so i use here i use a quarter inch rods and i can gouge from anywhere around 200 amps once the material is nice and hot from about 200 amps to about 220 amps a lot of people would like to go a lot higher 300 amps 250 amps to me that's too much for me personally uh, i found my sweet spot at 218 220 amps is good i'll start right now with 220 amps and see how that works so uh, with that said now it's time to get to getting and let's see if you can see what i'm talking about Okay, so to find an easy starting point, I look, usually look for these corners in here. Oh, sorry, let me move you down this way. Like, look for somewhere where we can start really easily. Start at the corner and expose that line on the shorter end. That way you can expose the actual corner from here and then go that way. So let's do that first. Still got the welding lens on there so you may not be able to see the separation line now you may think well aren't you saving this piece and why are you gouging so deep well as with any weld uh, anytime you add a weld to a weld mitt like this the weld actually penetrates the two parent metals so it's not as as cleanly removable as this surface and this surface the weld penetration goes in pretty pretty deep so there will be some sort of dug in bevel because of uh, how far the weld penetrated but here you know it's, it's only going down less than an eighth of an inch so that's easy enough to fill up when you put this piece back on another another uh, attachment so uh, now I'm gonna move on down here down this area here and try and gouge this part and then jump in from the inside I'm gonna go as far as I can through here cut this off here as far as I can there and then we'll flip this over and do the same thing the opposite. All right, let's try that down here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, as with anything, sometimes uh, you're better right-handed than you are left-handed. Uh, same with me. Uh, <laughs> You know, being at it so long, you would think, oh, you're good at whatever direction. It's still hard. It is what it is, right? So I'm not going to use the auto darkening for this particular section, just so you can kind of get a, a visual overview of what it looks like without, I mean, you know, like from a slight distance. So there we go. circles in this instance kind of don't like it I normally do a long V pattern let me try that now left-handed I was able to get about halfway to look in there. Now I can access that from this side here. It'll be easy enough. So let me spin this thing around. show you this one actually is pretty visible it's not the straightest line I think that was my left-handed side doesn't matter either way you can see the separation line in there all that stuff is grindable you can grind it that's what they make grinders for so here I may be able to show you a little bit more grinding on this section here because it's got an opening that you can see a little bit better um, it's still a little bit of a tight opening to get into not as bad as the other side right but at least you'll be able to see so let's let's see if you can see what I'm seeing
know sometimes you know it's just like uh the lincoln machines where they say the arc is very buttery you can kind of get the same effect depending on how long you you let this uh rod stick out now naturally the further you are away the less direct air is able to that the the less that the direct air is able to push the molten puddle away right but sometimes the further away gives you a softer uh, kind of arc in that sense uh, as well kind of weird you kind of have to explain uh, experience it to understand but air real close like that blows it away real hard real real sharp a little bit further away it, it does it more soft <laughs> buttery as they say so uh, I'm gonna end up having to be that distance away to reach far into that opening and it makes it a, bit, a little bit more challenging on occasion especially when the is a confined space but if it's out in the open you can have a nice buttery type of arc and it'll make a real nice uh, clean gouging so it just takes practice and once you learn it you'll, you'll be able to figure it out so here's the last section here we go helps to start the arc when it's nice and red and sometimes you can just ground it on the material until it starts going and it's easier to start almost like scratch starting a little bit easier so now that it's cold I can get it hot like this See, just like that let it get hot now it's ready to go go we had success so I didn't gouge in there too much right same with the uh, parent metal I did a little bit but it's not gonna hurt anything the same here it fell right off so you can still see the, the parent metal edge clean that up you know clean it up to where there's a slight bevel and we got a bevel penetration for the next uh, weld so good now this one here uh oh I uh, burnt my crazy hood. Dumb dumb. Even got a new headband too. Ah, uh, what a dummy. Oh well. Okay, so that did well. Now it's just a matter of grinding it up and uh, cleaning it up. Get the customer to give me the new ends. I'll put them on. Man, I can't believe I did that. Oh well. Alright, let me uh, clean those up. So I just got done cleaning these guys up. I did gouge in there a little bit, but if you don't tell, I won't tell. And actually, the next piece is going to be somewhere in this area, so you won't even notice once it's painted. And it turns out that the customer wanted to save this piece here because he's going to sell that. So there's plenty of parent metal there to line up correctly. And a little gouges there, here and there, but I put a little bevel on it, got rid of most of them. It should be fine. So all's looking good, and that should do it, at least for this one. So thanks for watching, 
And uh, now I gotta get to those things, if you guys remember. So we'll see you guys later.